Welcome guys and thank you for tuning in to episode 2 of my street food startup series. Today's video is centered around the fact that I found 200 pounds worth of coins lying in a money box from my pizza startup from last year. I've closed up the business but there's still a few things lying around and here's all I remember about money. You need to get a float, say anywhere from about £50 to £150 in coins. Depending on the pricing of your food items, you need a different proportion of 50p's to 20p's to 10p's, £1 coins, etc. And just get it from the bank. Remember, some banks only open from Monday to Friday, 9 to 5. Metro Bank is really good because it opens at weekends and in the evening. Remember, if you have no change, then you might have to say bye to customers, which is your worst case scenario. You should get a digital card payment device. Remember, in the West, at least in the UK, approximately 50% of transactions are through cards. A great card reader is iZettle because it's free for small businesses and it's the one I've proven to really work for me. iZettle is great because it lets you put a menu up and people can just click and just pay remotely through your 4G from anywhere. And their fees are just a couple percent of what you take. You really want to avoid carrying money in plastic bags because they tear and it's just unprofessional. It's always reassuring knowing everything is in one place in order. As soon as you think you got everything under wraps, you got to be careful with counterfeit money. I remember hearing many stories and even some people I knew who would buy £20 notes for £10 and then go to the local corner shop to buy just one chewing gum and then they'd get the change which would be genuine. Awful scam but this is very common and don't be fooled to think that this might not happen to you because it will hurt you when you go to the bank and your money is not accepted and at the end of the day you have to take responsibility for that because you accepted it. You can get a UV lamp which detects if the money is genuine but this requires a battery or a mains plug and they usually cost anywhere from 15 to 20 pounds but a pen is portable much easier just costs a couple quid and much more to hand. Remember what the name of the game is to spend as little and make as much, i.e. make money. If you can't make money, you're going to be forced to close down. As new a concept as you want to create, you have to remember that. I remember being told off by the health and safety officer who was keeping a sneaky eye on me. I didn't know he was watching me. You see, you don't know who the health and safety officer is. He can just sit on the side and observe you for a long time. My point is, he told me there should always be at least two people working at a market store. One person should serve the meal and take the money and the second person should just be preparing the food. Just think about it. Guess how many people have touched those coins before you, countless. So you don't want to be contaminating your food with that. Oh, and if you want to feel like a real market trader, then you have to get a money pouch. When it comes to pricing, you really just got to experiment and see what works for your product, because every product's different. Pizza, for instance, is a product people will pay a premium for, especially if it's authentic as opposed to new products where it's a bit risky and people maybe don't want to spend so much money to find out they may not want to eat that later. You kind of want to be around the average. It just depends on your strategy. One of my friends who's got a market store in Acton Market sells falafels at about £3, £3.50, but his turnover, the amount of customers he has is huge and he makes a lot of money. But on the flip side, let's say maybe there's less footfall but people are willing to pay a lot more e.g. maybe Canary Wharf, then you can adjust your prices accordingly as long as you're making money at the end of the day. For instance, my first event was 
catering for 2,000 people over a whole weekend. It was just me doing sourdough pizza and, and Jamaican jerk chicken. So what did that teach me? There was a load of people in a confined space and there was no convenience food close around. I could put my prices up and I did and I made a lot of money that first day. Shame it didn't happen <laughs> at every event but you have to kind of take the opportunity when it comes because then there'll be events where it will rain and you earn nothing, you see. Because at the end of the summer I didn't make enough money to continue to be fair. It, it comes down to that. And this board is amazing. With the pins it cost £150. It withstands rain, it's durable, it looks retro cool. I'd suggest this if you have the budget for it. Not my finest moment, but would you rather £200 or nothing? It's very common at many public events for staff to have their own voucher slash currency. You will be remunerated after the event. So look after those vouchers as if they're real cash and your life depends on it. Usually at the end of an event, one of the supervisors will come and count your vouchers and then you just have to chase them up in an email and wait for their invoice to come in. This usually takes at least a month. Don't be shy in trying to get a feel for how many staff you should expect during the whole event. And remember, you really want to get into the staff's good books because for many events, you as a caterer are chosen not the other way around. Hello, Leggero Galante. If you're going to be carrying the float in public, just don't make it obvious. Also, the risk of carrying money depends on the case-by-case -case basis, which really needs to be covered for your scenario in your risk assessment. Just sit down and think. If you were a thief, how would you get the money from a market trader? This is my biggest frustration. Remember, if you can't afford to lose the money you put into your business, then don't buy it, then don't invest in it. Trust me, selling my equipment from this business, I am lucky to be getting 50% of what I put in on the equipment straight up. The offers I'm getting are ridiculous and they're really peeing me off. Thank you guys for tuning in to another Born Again. I've got some comments saying my channel seems a bit scattergunned, but to be honest, I'm still closing my business from last year where I was trading Saldo Pizza for six months. So instead of just ignoring it, I'd like to just quickly make the opportunity to describe what I've kind of gone through and what I've learned, more importantly. Because my original strategy was to work at fun festivals throughout half a year and then move abroad in the winter with all the money I made and then come back in the festival season to sell more pizza. Although I'm not going to quite do that, I'm still going to be going away for winters and coming to work remotely in the summer here, so...